Hello everyone. Today we are going to see the second exercise of decision making and looping structure in C. Uh, before we start with the program, we will see what you mean by decision making. So what do you mean by decision? Uh, you want to pick an uh, choice that is you want to pick your choice in the available list of option you call it as decision right it may applicable for any scenario so if you want to make such a kind of your choice uh, only once then you go for your decision making structure so what are all the type of decision making structure available in your C right uh, before we get into that we will consider a scenario uh, where uh, you are going to your friend's home right and they want you to provide some drink if they ask you do you want to have any drinks you make a decision yes if you if you are making a decision yes that means you, they have given an option for you to have yes or no and you are making decision yes right then they ask you want coffee or tea they give you two option either you pick coffee or tea if suppose they are giving you multiple options, coffee, tea, buttermilk, uh, cool drinks, then you pick either one from the listed option. That is, you have multiple choices. You go for only one option, not all the options at the same time, right? This is where the variety of scenario in decision making. In your C, this is supported with if, if else, if you have two options, if else, if else, or switch condition if you have multiple options right then comes what you mean by looping you know you want to perform a task and you want that particular task to be repeated for finite number of times then you call it as looping say i know i want to take attendance if i enter into the class and i want to call out all the students that is i want to repeat the task of taking attendance for the total number of students in the class. This is the scenario. I am doing the same task repeated number of times, right? For such conditions, you call it as looping. You have, that is repeating uh, for a definite number of times. The structure supported on while, do while and for loop. In this video, we will see how to write a C program using your decision making statements. First, we will see if. That is the first scenario. You say yes, right? You have you say only one option. Either you agree or you don't agree. That is uh, your desire for picking the option. That desire is the condition in your C, right? If that condition goes true, you execute the statement. This is the general syntax. You have a test exp expression. If this expression is true, then the associated statements will be executed. Here that uh, for our scenario, the text expression will be, uh, do you want have a drink? If you say yes, the expression becomes true and they will go and prepare for you the thing, right? Okay, the corresponding flow chart. We already know you will have start and exit, right? This is the condition, always the condition, the decision making structure or represented by diamond symbol you have two outlets for true and false condition if it is true the body of the if statement will be executed if it is false it will go for the next statement after your if body even if the if condition is executed after execution it will go for the next statement so with this understanding we will see a sample program i want to design and develop an algorithm and flowchart that takes a number value as input and displays positive number, right? This thing is, I'm I want to write a C program which takes a number as input from the user and it, it evaluates some condition to check whether it is a positive number. If it is positive number, it will display it. I'm not going to worry about negative number. If it is negative number, it is not going to display anything. If it is positive, it will display, right? So this is the program that I want to do. First, we will see the algorithm for that. So I have to read the value. Uh, and I, for that, I am going to declare an integer variable number. Using uh, Then I will read the value from the user. Then I have to read the value from the user. Uh, then my task is I will check whether the number is greater than 0. Because I want to check whether it is positive or not. So I will check whether the number is greater than 0. 
If the condition is true, then I will print positive number. We will see corresponding algorithm. Right? Um, for input and output, we will use parallelogram symbol, right? So I am reading the number from as input. I am checking for the condition. If it is greater than 0, I just display positive number or else I just exit the program, right? With this, we will see the execution of the same program. We have already seen how to create your uh, program using your code block. That is first you have to create, you have to open, you have to uh, create a new file, right? You have to create a new file. Uh, I am I'm going to have C file, right? Then you have to pick the path for that. Uh, then you have to create a file and then you have to code it. Uh, this is what you do. As I have already have the program written. Now what I am going to do is I am going to open it, right? If you want to create the new file, this is how you do. Now I already have a program. So I just open the program. The program is in exercise 2a, right? So, I have declared an integer variable number. I have used scan of to read the number value and I have checked if it is greater than 0, it will print positive value. Now, the program is ready. Then you have to compile your program. There is no error. Now, the object file and the application file will be generated. Now, I want to run the program. Okay, this is because I have an antivirus. Okay, you have to run the program. Enter the number. See, I am just going to enter a negative number. So, it will not produce me any result. Okay. Now, again I am going to run the program. Now, I am going to give a positive number. Right, it displays it is a positive number. Right, this is what we need. Uh, so, we have seen an example for the, this is the program, we have seen an example for if program. Now, we will see if else, where you have two options, either or that, that is if you, if you are asked, you want coffee or tea, either you go for coffee or you go for tea, right? So, uh, in exam or you pass or fail, you have only two options, either pass or fail, right? Okay, so for such conditions, you have a test expression. If the expression is true, then you will execute a set of statements. If the expression is false, then you execute another set of statements. So, how to have a flowchart for that? The same thing, you have a diamond box. If true, you will have one set of statements. If false, you will have another set of statements that will be present in your else part. After the execution, they, they will execute the statement after the control and you will exit. So, we will see a program for that. The program is you have to find whether the number is even or odd. Right? A number can be either even or odd. So, first we will see the algorithm for that. Start. You read the val value for that number. To the condition to find whether it is even or odd is, I am going to apply modulus operator. As we know, what modulus operator will return? It will return the reminder. So, if the reminder is 0, then it is an even number. Otherwise, it is an odd number. Right? So, we will see the flowchart for that. <clears throat> so, I have read the value. I am applying the condition. If the condition is true, I will display as even number. False, it will display as odd number. Right? Now, we will see the program for that. Right. I have already stored the program. So, I am just opening the program. Okay. Uh, see the same thing as your previous program you have read the cre uh, you have created an integer variable named number then you have an ask the value from the user using your scan of statement then you are going for the condition 
that is if the number mod 2 is 0 then it will print even number or it will print the for odd number so now I have compiled it and now I am going to run the program I am going to give the number as 8 this is because I am having antivirus here okay, now I am giving the number as 8 so it says it is an even number right so let me try it for an odd number let me give a number as 7 it prints it is as odd number right now we will continue with our next decision making statement this is the program given our next decision making statement is I, what if I do if I have multiple options right if I have multiple options um, <clears throat> That is, you, for this, a simple example is calculating your grade, right? Uh, you have calculated your average and based on your average, you have to pick up the grade. If I am greater than 80 percentage, then I will be O grade. If I am from 70 to 80, I will be A grade. If suppose I am from 60 to 70, I will be B grade, right? You have multiple options and you can go with either only one option, not all the options at a time, right? This is an example of if else if conditions. Mm. So, so first I will check for a condition that is make my condition may be my average mark is uh, uh, greater than 90 percentage. If it's so I will just print it as O grade. If it is uh, greater than or if it is between the range from 70 to 80 I will print it as A grade right. This is how each time I will check for a condition based on the condition I will execute. If one condition is satisfied, then I will skip the remaining condition and I will go for the statement after your if else if else condition. If all these conditions fail, automatically it will come under my default statement. So how you write for the flowchart? You first check for the condition. If the condition is true, you execute the statement and you go for the statement after your else, right? If the condition is false, you check for the second condition. If it is true, you execute it and end it. If not, you check the next condition. One, only you, uh, next condition will be checked only if the current condition is false. This is what if else if. So, we will see a program for that. Uh, the program is I want to find the uh, you are given with the quadratic equation uh, you have to find what are what is the roots for that particular quadratic equation we know the formulas for finding the roots and the input will be this coefficient value a b and c what are all the options you have you will first calculate your discriminant based on the value of discriminant if it is equal to 0 if it is greater than 0 if it is less than 0 based on the discriminant value you will decide what kind of roots they are right that is what your programmer so this is the algorithm you start the program you read the coefficient values uh, you calculate your discriminant right uh, based on that is b square minus b square minus 4ac right if the discriminant value is 0 then the roots are equal right and what will be the root value given and you just go for step 5 that is you print the root and you end your programmer uh, if suppose uh, if it is greater than 0 you print the roots of real and distinct you calculate the root value and you go for the step 5 where you print the root values and you end it up it has to be step 6 right uh, if not if not both the cases it is not equal to it is not greater than automatically it means it is less than so i print the your imaginary uh, i calculate the root value right then i print that and i end the program we will see the flow chart for that so you read the value of A, B and C. The C is missed here. You have to read the value of A, B, C. You calculate the discriminant. You check whether it is equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, you print roots or equal. You calculate the root value and you directly go for printing the value. If the condition is false, you go and check for the next condition. If it is greater than 0, you print it as real and distinct. You calculate the root value and then you print the value and you end your program. If again this is false, then automatically uh, you know that it are imaginary. You calculate the root value. Then you just uh, 
print the value right this is what your algorithm so we will see the program for that okay this is the program i have opened the program uh, so i have declare uh, i have created three float variables for the coefficient and root 1 and root 2 for calculation and real and imaginary for real part and imaginary part calculation and this is for discriminant value calculation i am reading the value calculating the discriminant based on the discriminant value i just do the following so you have if condition you have else if for greater than or else you have your else part right this is how you do your calculation right now let me run the program i have compiled it and now i am running the program okay this is because of ideas. i run the program okay enter the value of a i am giving the value of a should be greater than non zero coefficient of b i give it as 4 coefficient of c i give it as minus 4 okay that means uh, the roots are real and distinct so which condition it has satisfied it has satisfied the discriminant value is greater than 0 okay now we will continue with the program right switch condition the switch is similar to your if else if condition you are given with multiple options you have to pick up one options but you are not going to um, run an expression instead you are going to check for the values you don't have an test expression you have a value right that is the difference between if else if and switch up i have a condition here i have a variable here or it may be an expression based on this value i will execute a part of the statement if the value is something one then i will execute the corresponding block if it is two i will execute the corresponding block if nothing is uh, okay then i will go execute the default value here you have to understand one thing you should have a break statement if you don't have break statement after executing the particular set of statements it will also execute the other statement because you are not going to break the condition so here it is like a simple arithmetic calculator where you are going to apply all the four operators you read two values from the user and based on the operator type you will perform the operation and you print the result the algorithm is you read the value of a b and what is the operator based on the value of operator if the operator is one that is case one then you compute the result like this a plus b if it is minus you calculate a minus b in the same way and you display the result value right the flow chart is um, you start you read the values you just switch that is you make a decision based on the operator value if the operator value is plus you perform this computation if it is minus you perform this star you perform this you slash you perform this computation whatever may be the result it has to end over the displaying result value and you end the program we will see the execution for that open I have a program here. See, I have a character. The operator is a character value. Then I have a, b and result as integer to store the value. Then I am reading the value of a and b as well as the operator. Based on the value of operator, the corresponding statement will be executed and then finally print the result. Now I am going to build the program. Build the program. Yes, I have built it. Then I am going to run the, okay, 
I have already a running execution version so it was not enabled okay now I build the program yes it is compiled now I am going to run the program see this window will never appear as I have installed antivirus it is coming now and then the value of A I am giving it as 5 value of B I am giving it as 2 and I am going to apply um, star operator so the result is 10 right okay so what are all the things today we have seen is what do you mean by a decision making structure what are all the type of decision making structure available and a program for each in the next uh, session we will see how to write uh, um, c program using your looping structure right so what is looping looping means you know what is the task you have to perform and you have either predefined number of times uh, fixed that predefined number of time may be fixed or maybe depend on certain values right uh, and execution that is your looping that we will see it on the next slide thank you